Welcome to Amps Eds. Always, we are ready to say, proud to be an Indian. But, getting down to the basics, we might realize that we are actually ignorant of the number of states that make up India and that some areas of our land are union territories. All these put together make up our incredible India, the land of unity in diversity. From this map study session of part 1, you will get a thorough idea of the 28 Indian states and the 8 Union territories. This will help you to have a sound knowledge of the distribution tables that you learn in each textual lessons. You will also get to know the various rivers in India according to our ICSE syllabus which will be your base to learn the rest of the map marking as it is the outline map of India that will be provided for your board exams. So it's easy to learn the features mentioned in this syllabus based on the location of the rivers. Let's begin with a detailed study of the political map of India. Here, I am listing out the states in their alphabetical order. Andhra Pradesh, Arunachal Pradesh, Assam, Bihar, Chhattisgarh, Goa, Gujarat, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Jharkhand, Karnataka, Kerala, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra, Manipur, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Nagaland, Odisha, Punjab, Rajasthan, Sikkim, Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Tripura, Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, and West Bengal. Now we shall check out the eight Union territories Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Chandigarh, Dadra and Nagar Haveli, and Daman and Deep, Delhi. 
जम्मू एंड कश्मीर लद्दाख लक्षद्वीप एंड पुदुचेरी certain specific details to be looked into before proceeding to the study of rivers the board asserts that map marking should be done in the right manner or you don't get marks so it's important to know the tips and techniques or rules for map marking to get a full score When you identify and name a river first you have to know its places of origin and end or the starting point and the ending point then you draw over the line closely and label it as r dot the name of the river like this In case you don't have space to label the river along its side you may use neat arrows to do so but keep in mind that always in map marking the arrow head should point towards the feature that you are marking and not at the name like this here The feature to be labeled is the river. As mentioned earlier, we will start with the map of the rivers based on our syllabus. Here you see the outline map of India with the rivers that we are expected to know from the exam point of view. That is the Himalayan rivers and the plateau rivers first of all let me point out that it is a series of river systems that we find here on our india map let's get down to business starting with the northern part of india we have the east flowing and the west flowing rivers let's section out these as river systems for a better understanding the major rivers that we find in the north are the indus the ganga with yamuna its major tributary and the brahmaputra while indus is the west flowing river the others that is the ganga and the brahmaputra are east flowing rivers You might notice that these major rivers have branches or tributaries joining them. Together with these tributaries we call each one a river system. Thus we have the Indus river system, the Ganga river system and the Brahmaputra river system. Let's begin with a study of the Ganga river system. as it is the longest with the plain being the world's largest river basin the ganga rises or originates in the himalayas cutting across the northern states from uttarakhand to west bengal most of its delta regions lie in bangladesh The largest distributary is the river Hooghly. This region where the Ganga empties itself into the Bay of Bengal that is the mouth of the Ganges is called the Sundarbans. The Yamuna River joins the Ganga on its right bank at Allahabad from the west. The other rivers that join it on the right bank are Chambal, Betwa, and Son, 
which rise in the Deccan Plateau region. River Damodar flows into the river Hooghly. The rivers Gomti, Ghagra, Gandak and Koshi join the Ganga on its left bank. I feel that you might be wondering how to identify the right and the left banks of a river. So let me brief you up on that quickly. Here I have already mentioned that the Ganga originates in the Himalayas and flows from Uttarakhand to West Bengal. So we know the direction in which the river flows. Now place yourself at the spot where it originates as if you are moving in the same direction like this. Then the river bank to your right would be the right bank and the one to your left would be the left bank. I suggest that you try to mark these rivers on the outline map sheet that you have the one with the rivers marked and practice until you learn them. That's the final tip for the day. Practice makes perfect. There is no other shortcut to score the full 30 marks in part A. So go through the video, pause at each river, mark it, label neatly and proceed to the next. Good luck! We will get back to the remaining river systems in the next session of part 2. Bye!